Hello and welcome. So you're probably into Valorant if you clicked on this video. And well, that makes two of us. But today, as you can tell by the title, I want to put the round-based tactical gunplay to the side and focus more on the hidden backstory and secrets that the story has to offer. I've always enjoyed piecing together stories that aren't presented straight up in the game itself and then theorizing about it, so any suggestions and theories are welcome in the comments. So in this video, we'll just be going over some of the basic plots and events to establish the key information about the world of Valorant, meaning the background info from media and voice lines, maps and some of my theories. Stories for characters themselves will come separately for each video, uh, because if I did them all right here, it would be super long. Plus, new agents will be coming out, so if I make a video right now, it wouldn't contain the later agents. So for now, just the basics of the world of Valorant and some theories. Okay, here we go. The events of Valorant are happening on a near future Earth, and we get some hints that these events happen through the years 2049 and 2053, but Riot says that it's not all defined yet, so let's just say near future for the time being. At some point before Valorant, there was a catastrophic event known as the First Light, some sort of solar energy, or asteroid perhaps, which had the power to transform life and nature, technology, and global governments. As the result of the First Light, some individuals have been gifted with supernatural powers and they have been named the Radiants. We already know some of these characters like Phoenix, who creates and controls fire, and Jet, who controls the wind. But the event also either brought or created a substance known as Radianite, which you might know as the in-game currency for skins, but I don't think it's somehow meant to connect the universe to our real world, you know, it's just named after the Radianite. Radianite in the universe can be, by methods unknown, collected, processed, and turned into a power source, weapon, or used for complex technology. Agents like Sova, Cypher, Brimstone and Killjoy use Radianite based technology since they aren't Radiants themselves. Radianite might even have the power to duplicate beings, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's just take a deeper look into Radiance. If it isn't obvious yet, Radiants are created by being exposed to Radianite in its natural, uncontained form. This more often than not probably has terrible side effects. Most likely, you know, you just straight up die. But some humans are somehow biologically altered, giving them basically superpowers. But we aren't sure if this process can be deliberate, meaning that people signed up to be tested for these powers, or were forced into tests, or was it all just accidental, meaning that people were at the wrong place at the wrong time, but instead of dying, they hit the jackpot, and got superpowers. It seems that in some parts of the world, Radiants are outcasts and are ostracized and hunted by normal people and are encouraged to hide their powers. Mentioned by Reyna, sometimes when she finally gets to use those powers during missions. Today is a gift to Radiants. We're finally free to use our power. And Reyna shows resent for non-Radiant fighters, meaning that she stands up for her own kind. Oh, do your little machines need help? Take your time. We Radiantes will start without you. And yet, Phoenix seems to be the exact opposite, proudly showing his flashy powers, perhaps even being a local celebrity. Yes, yes, it's me, autographs if we survive, yeah? So, it seems that the world is divided on where exactly Radiants stand, but we can dive into that later when we do videos for each separate agent. Right now, it's about the substance itself, more precisely, it's what the actual gameplay is about. In the rounds of Valorant, the agents take turns attacking and defending storages of Radianite. Most of the sites on all maps have storage crates of Radianite, that's those glowy green crates. And this is now just my guess, but I don't think the spike is actually meant to destroy the site itself, just merely to somehow react with the Radianite, either rendering it useless or teleporting it since that's what Breach mentions in the tutorial. Up ahead is a device called the Spike. It's how the enemy steals our Radianite. So the spike is not an explosive per se, but the energy bubble released by the teleportation is still lethal to nearby humans. This could be the same reaction that once gave the Radiants their powers, but the second dose probably isn't as healthy. Again, it's just my guess. But then who are the agents attacking? Who has all this Radianite for themselves? The Kingdom Corporation is the leading business conglomerate in this universe. 
They produce anything from technology, weapons, basically a sort of cliche, evil, corrupt, greedy company. And of course, they've got to get their hands on all that yummy radianite. And as I'm sure you can guess, a multi-billion dollar shady company that is the leading head on scientific research, they're gonna play dirty. And that's exactly what we see on the map bind. Via the map coordinates that we get at the start, we see that it's set in Morocco, that's also apparently Cypher's hometown. If you ever explored the map when you're practicing lineups or whatever, uh, you can sort of notice that high-tech equipment and stations are built right next to the traditional Moroccan households and businesses. Not that Kingdom care who they stomp over. The Radianite was there, they wanted it, they took it. What has Kingdom done to this town? However pretty their lies are, they're just sucking my city dry. The lies we've told this city. Just to pry it open and suck it dry. In fact, all maps are tied to Kingdom. The skyscraper on Split is their main office building, Bind is their Radianite refining station, Haven is an old monastery used as a cover for an underground research and development lab, for Radianite as we can see the elevator on C, the server room on B, and at Defender Spawn we have a compromised crate of Radianite which was so powerful that it instantly terraformed the earth around it, doing some damage to the perimeter, and Icebox is serving as Kingdom's main storage facility hidden away in the Arctic. Ascent, as far as I know, doesn't have any ties to Kingdom specifically, but that entire map is floating in the air as an island. That's showing the direct effect if the power of Radianite goes unchecked. So Kingdom pretty much has all the Radianite on lock, they won't let anyone else close. And they've used it to make all that advanced tech we see agents use, even the weapons we can purchase in the buy menu have that K logo on them. And the spike and the fuser are all Kingdom manufactured. Well if you're a company that makes everything, it's safe to assume that some of those things will be used against you. So I think it's safe to assume that the Kingdom Corporation are sort of the bad guys in this story, you know? And this leaves us with the Valorant Protocol. The Valorant Protocol is a secret organization consisting of Radiants and people armed with Radianite technology, which they either stole from Kingdom or they were once on Kingdom's side but rebelled once they saw their corruption and selfish ways. It's safe to assume that all playable agents are a part of this group, but we can't say for sure how exactly this group was formed, but if I had to guess, I'd say Sage was one of the founding members as she's been in communication with Phoenix in the first cinematic trailer and later asks Sky to join her as well in her trailer. The Valorant's base is hidden among the floating islands in Venice, that's what the range is in game. It's where the new recruits to the protocol train their powers and shooting skills so that they are able to fight in the field. But now comes the question, if all agents are in the Valorant protocol, then how can the same agents be defending Kingdom's property? Well. Here's the theory. This idea has actually been proposed quite a few times now and for good reason. So we all know that there can be two of the same agents in the game at once, not on the same team, but opposing sides. And this isn't just brushed off as a game mechanic error, no. The characters actively reference their clone. Some aren't even surprised it's there. Here's some voice lines. Sabine, Sabine, what have you been working on over there? I'm curious, but you don't need to be alive for me to find out. I know your tricks, Wind Girl. You're not faster than me. Who are you? Copy of me? <laughs> Where did you come from? If any of you got a problem with me, take it out on my double. This seems to suggest that cloning or duplicating a human is possible with Radianite technology, even if the person is radiant or not. This could explain why one moment Sage is attacking Kingdom Supply Depot and the other time defending it. And since their voice lines don't change as much depending on which side you're playing, it could mean that the clones don't even know that they are clones, or believe that they are the originals. I'm sure at some point Brimstone did fight for Kingdom, but since he has voice lines cooperating with agents who've never been affiliated with Kingdom, we can assume that he at one point switched sides to fight and expose Kingdom, so they cloned him as well. It could just be the developers trying to make sense of the agent duplicates, but with all things considered, it's a reasonable assumption. Now I'm not sure where the story will take us, that's up for Riot to decide when they release more cinematics, which I mean, please do, we love them. But I think the latest event in this universe is in the Sky trailer, where Sky is recruited by Sage when she notices another disastrous event occurring. Perhaps another first light type event? Maybe a weather byproduct caused by all the tampering with Radianite. We can't know for sure. But as long as Kingdom can keep chucking out clones and Sage can keep reviving the original agents in the Valorant Protocol, it seems that they can just fight again and again 
and again, and again, and again. Hey, congrats to making it to the end of the video. So tell me what you think in the comments. You know, um, reading the comments is the best part. You know, I love to read the theories you guys have. You know, you want to, you think something's different. You do you agree with me? Uh, and yeah, now come the videos for uh, separate agents. Would you like to see first? I'm not sure what kind of order uh, I should take with the agent videos. And of course, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, uh, hit the thumbs up. That literally makes me fucking feel like a baby and yeah so if you're gonna subscribe maybe also hit the bell because otherwise it'll just probably get lost in the algorithm you know sad face whatever anywho i think i also have a twitch i don't know so i might be there as well maybe right now i don't even, i don't know thank you very much for checking in with me today and uh, hopefully i'll see you again soon